All right, first let me just hear from John Lovering. Are you going to step up I here? Will, yeah. I will. All right, we have enough time. It turns out it's hard to ever know if everyone's going to be within their time or not. But um, I don't have a prepared introduction. But I will say that this is John Lovering. He is the longtime host of Audio Theater, a great supporter of this radio station and many other wonderful endeavors around this area. He's an excellent community member who taught school for 30, 35 five years, years yeah. science, biology, biology. To in the high school. Yes. Whew. And he's still here to tell us about it, but I'm not sure that's what he's going to tell us no, about. We're going to dissect frogs. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, that's not the hat he's wearing, but here he is to share a funny story with us. Right. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. I hope you feel that way after I'm done. <laughs> um, it was uh, August 31st, 1954. I was only seven years old, and I was staying at a cottage on 4th Street in Hampton, New Hampshire. My parents owned this cottage, and they, were, they had a larger cottage right in front of it, which was right on Route 1, right across the sea from what then was a stone seawall, like it is in Rye now. It wasn't the metal seawall, and Route 1A was a two-lane highway. It wasn't divided like it is now. And uh, we woke up that morning of the 31st, and the wind was howling, and my sister and I were laughing, because I had a sister who was 13. Her name was Carol. And it seems that day, my parents had been talking the night before, that Carol was going to visit us on the, uh, the next day, on the 31st of August. Now, we thought this was really funny. Carol was my sister's name. Carol was the name of one of the worst hurricanes to ever hit New England. But we didn't know that that was going to happen, and I was laughing, and we said, hey, Carol's coming, and I heard my father say, the winds are going to be twisting and swirling, and I said, you're going to be doing the twisting and the swirling, and we were laughing, and we had a heck of a good time laughing about it. My grandmother was staying with us. Her name was Gertrude. That gives you an idea of the kind of person she was. She was from <laughs> she was from New Jersey, and she had come up to stay with us for the summer. Uh, she was a kind of a woman that always had her hair done, red nails, always dressed to the kill. You know, had beautiful jewels and all this. And I don't know, I don't know how she got those things because she didn't have the proverbial pot to you know what in. But anyway, <laughs> that's. She always tried to look the part. Well, she was sitting in a rocking chair. Now, this cottage had three rooms, two bedrooms, and then a living room, kitchen combination, and a little tiny bathroom. All the windows in the cottage were the kind, they weren't sash windows. They didn't open from the bottom. They, they opened from the inside. You pull them open, and they open like a cupboard. So I say that because soon they were blowing open. And uh, anyway, my aunt was, I mean, I, my grandmother was sitting in the rocking chair, rocking back and forth, and I remember this huge huge white pocketbook and she had it on her lap and had her hands gripped over the top of it and those red nails on the white uh, pocketbook I can still see it I close my eyes rocking back and forth back and forth back and forth and my sister and I were down on the floor in front of the couch laughing because we thought if she was funny this whole thing was funny then the building began to shake my father went outside because he had bought his first new car that he ever owned. The man lived to be 91, and he never bought a new car before or after that. Uh, it was a 1955 Pontiac. He had just bought it. And, of course, the wind was blowing. We had about 80, 90 mile an hour gusts coming in off the water. And we were right open to the ocean. Uh, and the sand was just blowing down the street and sandblasting his new car. The police had asked us to leave and go to Hampton Academy. My father refused. He was going down with the ship, and we were going with him. <laughs> so, so he went out, and he kept moving the car from place to place. He'd go out, and wherever way the wind was coming, he'd try to get the car positioned on the back side. Then the wind would shift, and he'd go out and move it again. <laughs> then he got hemmed in, because I remember looking out. My mother was swearing at him, <laughs> and um, leaving me here, you... Uh, anyway, I, I looked out the window, and the power lines were leaning over the, the poles, and the, the power lines were hitting each other, and all these sparks were flying in the street. Then the lines went down on the road. Then I started crying. I wasn't laughing anymore. I was really scared at that point, because I could hear snap, snap, 
rip, tear, snap, the shingles were going off the roof. And pretty soon, the windows started blowing open. The, co the whole cottage was rocking. They were only built on cedar posts. They didn't have foundations. And the cottage was rocking, and the cupboard doors opened, and the dishes started falling out. The, the, there was a large lamp in our kitchen area that was swinging back and forth. And my father was trying to, he came in, he was trying to nail the, the windows together. My mother had pots everywhere because the water was pouring down through the ceiling. And my father said, this was an open roof, all rafters. It didn't have a ceiling. You could see the rafters right up to the roof. We could see daylight through the cracks. And my sister and I were so scared, my father said, Nana, that's what, my grandmother, you, Nana, oh, you three are going into the bathroom because that's the only place that had a little tiny window up near the top and there wasn't flying glass he was afraid of. So he thought that would be a good place. So my, my grandmother went in there. Where did she sit, of course, was on the toilet. <laughs> now the seat was down, and she had her, her, her raincoat on, her white pocketbook, and her nails, and she was rocking back and forth. My sister was at, down, sitting on the floor and had a hold of her right leg. I sat on the floor holding her left leg, and we were crying, Nana, Nana, we're going to be okay, and we would cry. And she, this went on, and then we heard bang, and all of a sudden there was a ripping and pulling and cracking of lumber and nails, and all of a sudden our entire porch lifted up. The wind had gotten under the porch on the front of the house, lifted it up and took our porch, the railing part of the stairs, took it right over the top of the cottage and slammed it through the cottage next door, where later on we learned that the man was sitting right in front of the window that it hit <laughs> and he was severely injured. But we didn't know that at the time. And when that sound happened, I can't describe it, it was like a roar of a, uh, of a train with a cracking, snapping and, and screeching of nails, as they t the squealing as they were pulling out. And I, I looked for my grandmother for comfort. Nana, are we going to be okay? And this is what she said. Oh, Jesus, God, we're all going to die. <laughs> and yet here he is. Years later to tell us about it. Thanks, John.